Hello, this is an introduction to Mylan, and this is for the Eclipse platform, version 3.5.1, Galileo. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and download Mylan for Eclipse. Go to the Mylan download site and click on downloads. First, we're going to need this link will also need the extras link because we're going to do the Jira plugin integration. Conveniently after install, we have the option to add sources. So we're going to add the Mylan source there. And we're also going to add the extras source. Once we've added the extras source, we can then now see them in the drop down list, select one, and uh, I've already got mine installed, so they won't be able to be listed for install, but what we want is we want the integration and the features from Mylan. Under extras, we want to make sure that we get the Jira integration plugin. And when you're done, you should see under your installed software, you should see the Jira Now I have set up a, uh, a spot in my quick launch for the task list. You, there's also a task repository that you can get to. I'm going to set up a task repository now. Some of you may have CAS in front of your Jira application server, and that's fine. Make sure that CAS, though, doesn't block your web services communication because Mylan communicates with Jira over web services. So here is the URL here for the WSDL, and you want to make sure that CAS isn't in front of that. CAS is really only for people authentication. So since this is an external application, we want to use Jira's internal authentication instead of CAS. Now I'm going to enter in my credentials for Jira. Yes, let's create a query for our repository. Now you can create a query with Mylan, but I would like to use a filter from our application instead. So I'm going to go to Jira and I'm setting up a filter right now. Going to make it for pretty much everything. And I want it for tools development and all open issues. So there we go. Quick save the filter for open develop tools development. Now it's there and I can select it and there's nothing in it. So I'm going to create an issue now for tools development really quickly. Nothing fancy. All right, now I should synchronize. And when I synchronize, I will see my issue show up. And there it is. So now I'm going to activate my issue. And I can activate it by clicking on this little button here. This automatically activates my issue that I'm working on and enables a context for it. So now there's nothing in my context, so I'm going to create a project. Just your basic project, really. OK. So I'm going to add some source code to it really quickly. All right, there we go. Now we need a test class. 
That's not going to be available in my context yet, but I'm going to add it to my build path anyway. Notice it disappeared us because it's not part of my context yet. All right, so let's go and set myself up so my test can run in a different path. There we go. I'm going to create myself one more class. It's my test class. I need to set up JUnit for it to run. I'm on JUnit 4. There we go. All right. Is that the normal accoutrements? Some boilerplate. And, yep, another class. Okay. I'm going to remove this one from my context because it's not really part of this project. Now I'm going to add all that stuff back in to my context. All right. Now I can move my test class over as soon as I create a package for it. All right. There you go. Now it's all set up the way I really wanted it before and you can see switching on and off my context what happens. Some files disappear that I don't really care about and only files that I really want in my context show up. And yeah, you can see that there is not there now. Now it is and I need to remove it. So I'm going to remove it there. All right. So now I'm going to attach my context to my issue. Right there. Yeah. Just use a generic comment. All right. Now let's create another issue. Uh, another generic issue for that other class that I created. And tools development again, so it gets picked up by the query. And now I synchronize, and bang, like magic, it's there. So now let's activate our new issue. And there's nothing in the context, so let's go ahead and add that class to the context. Let's add it there, you can see that. Now let's go ahead and Attach this one. Your message. Voila! It's there. Like magic. So, let's go and activate our other issue. And I'll show you how context works. Let's open up the issue and take a look at the context. There. You can see all the files that are part of the context. And what's interesting is you can see that there's a date associated with the context. So you can have more than one to choose from on an issue. Let me show you why. Suppose I get rid of my test class. OK, it's gone. It's not in my context anymore. I'm going to attach this new context and then retrieve it again. Make sure that it's gone. 
So, see that I get that one and it's gone. So now I am going to retrieve the old one and there it is. It's my old contacts. So now you can share your contacts with other developers 